What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today I'm going to talk about Diablo Force Campfire Chat, specifically the Infernal Horde mode. Now, I want to get into this and kind of give my opinion on it, okay? Just as someone who's been playing Diablo for 20 years, etc., etc., I've played all the Diablos, everything Diablo has uh, put out, even Diablo Immortal. And I think the developers are going in the wrong direction with one key point, okay? There are too many summoning materials. There are too many materials, unique materials in the game. They're adding more and more currencies and more and more summoning materials, okay? We have sigils. We have forgotten souls. We have the thing that sockets jewelry. We have the blue mats. We have the, you know, the rare mats. We have the boss materials for each separate boss. There are too many unique materials. And Varshan alone has multiple different body parts to summon him. And all the other bosses have multiple parts to summon them. And then you have, you know, the sigils and sigil dust. Now you're going to add compasses. Oh, yeah, you also have the um, the pits, too. You also have the pit thing. Now you're going to add a compass to get you into hell to do the infernal mode. And the infernal horde mode is going to give you another currency. I think that, that we're just inflating the currencies right now. We're inflating the activation currencies and the activation materials. I think they're, they're, it's getting out of hand. It's getting to that point where it, they, they need to cut back on the materials that you need. They need to just eliminate a whole bunch of them. They, they just need to eliminate materials. There are too many materials. If materials were, were, were a swimming pool... It would be flooding the entire city with materials. There are too many materials. Just like they, they fixed the problem with aspects, right? And, and gave you the, uh, the codex. They fixed that. That's beautiful. That was perfect. That fixed that problem. We need to do the same thing with materials. Oh yeah. You have gym fragments too. You have all these, all these ridiculous materials. Some more important than others, but there are too many. Now, these compasses that they're going to talk about actually take up inventory space. And also on top of that, you have to level them up and do different things to get them, you know, to get to the Infernal Horde mode for different levels, etc., etc. You, you, you know how that works. They are taking the concept of, hey, we have to farm keys. We have to get the organs to get the Uber Tristram. They are taking that to way, way beyond what is necessary. That is not necessary at all. And I've played mods too, like uh, Path of Diablo. Path of Diablo to get to the to get to the new maps. You go, you fight the smith. The smith drops one thing. Okay, you can re-roll it maybe with obols, but the smith drops you know orbs of corruption or OOC orbs of corruption. But the smith he drops one thing. You click the button. You go. You open the portal. You go to the map. That's it. You click one button. It drops one material. You go to the portal. And that's the map. And Diablo, like, two, you go to the boss, you fight the boss, that's it. The only boss that needs to be summoned are Ubers. And when you do summon the Ubers, they actually lead to a guaranteed drop. That's another big difference. Not only are they harder than the Ubers in Diablo 4, they are harder than that, and you need specific builds, but when you do beat Uber Bale, or, or wait, Uber Diablo, when you beat Uber Tristram, whatever, when you beat Uber Tristram, you do get the torch. You get a torch at the end, and the torch is OP. But you know you've gotten the torch because you've accomplished that goal. There, There is no real reward like that in Diablo 4, so there shouldn't be a requirement to have these materials to summon these bosses. So Uber, Dur not Uber Uber Durial, but Uber Durial, Uber Durial shouldn't require any mats. They they should have a really cool like redesign of the maggot layer, or not mag. They should have a really cool redesign of Talrasha's tomb, right? A really cool, just remake Talrasha's tomb and put Durial in it and make it like a Diablo two boss run. Just basically import a Diablo two boss run into Diablo 4 and we can enjoy it and put up put make the enemies really high level like make them 120 130 a super high level and make the rewards really really nice 
and you know if you get you know a Shaco or some uber unique drops from for you know from Doriel, you know personally you made it through that dungeon and you killed Doriel enough times to get that to get that uh you know drop so basically it would be making Doriel a more of a skill more of a time based strategy rather than a monotonous strategy of collecting materials to fight Duriel. Now, if you want to do like Uber Beast in the Ice, you know, and have like the ultra, ultra Uber bosses, that can still require materials. That's okay. If you want to take the, take the boss materials and move it to, you know, the, the ultra Ubers or whatever they're calling it, the, the, uh, the infernal, the, the hell, the internal, whatever it is bosses the uber uber bosses that's okay because you're collecting the materials and you're fighting a super ridiculously high hp boss that's worth it the regular bosses that can still drop the materials still drop the uniques should not need summoning materials it, it sh they should have a dungeon kind of like you would in diablo 2 in my opinion i think that that might help with things because me personally this is just my personal personal experience just my personal experience I get really bored in Diablo 4. I love the pits, by the way. Pits are really good. But I get really bored fighting uber bosses in Diablo 4. I, I, I just hate them. I don't know why. I'm trying to figure it out. And I think it's because you have to get the materials. That's very boring. Especially for someone who has ADHD. Like Getting these materials are extremely monotonous and boring. I'd rather there just be a dungeon with a uh, a skill floor where, you know, if you're low level, you're not going to be making it through the dungeon to to fight Duriel. You know, this whole thing where you have to get a group together to do a Duriel rotation, it's it's ridiculous, you know. That that is that is a community solution to a problem that the developers created. That's a that's a that's a creative solution by the community coming up with durial rotations to offset the way it's designed that you get to durial so no i don't like the boss materials i don't like the summoning materials there are too many materials too many summoning materials too many you know um too many of these things like sigils and now the compasses and then when you get to the infernal horde they give you more currency Right. Let's watch it here for a second. You know, let's just watch it. Let's uh, let's watch it here for a second, and then you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. You know, context. You know, we did some early brainstorming for season five, and we knew <clears throat> that, you know, we needed to build out the end game. Uh, so True. end game. You know, we've True. heard y'all that end game is very important. And right. season four, we added the pit into the end game, and some people have been playing hell tight. I love the pit, by the way. The pit is into great. The end game, but we still want to expand the end game a bit more, right? So if it's an end game activity, we definitely need something that's rewarding and very replayable. We also wanted to make, True. make something with a lot of monsters. I mean, monster True. density and just entering that, that feeling of flow state is really important for players. Uh, we needed something that had stakes and we wanted players to push their luck. And finally, we really wanted to return to hell, you know, previous Diablo game. Yeah, it was kind of weird that in Diablo four, we only went to hell for that, you know, the last quest involving Lilith and they didn't expand in hell. And we all just assumed that hell would be an expansion when they add Diablo. Right. So we, we all just assumed that the next expansion to the game is going to have hell and, and Diablo in it. I, I would hope we hope. Right, we hope anyway. We hope games let you return to hell after you defeat the big boss, but Diablo 4 hadn't done that yet. And so, with all those goals in mind, let me introduce you to the Infernal Hordes. That all sounds great. Everything he just said is perfect, spot on. That's exactly what uh, players want. Uh, let me give you a, a quick summary of what the Infernal Hordes is uh, it's a wave based uh, gameplay mode with survival. That's okay, because there are games like Vampire Survivor and Death Must Die. Those games are really cool. There are, there, they, you know, they are a horde mode. So I like those games. They're really cool, right? And I, I think that I, when I was playing Death Must Die, I'm thinking, you know, there's no reason why Diablo couldn't have a mode 
that's kind of similar to this where you go in and you know you have the boss rush mode or like a horde mode type of situation where you know you get buffs as you go and you kind of have a little fun thing uh, let's see how they do it vibra like choices in between the waves and it'll culminate with an all-new boss encounter Sounds and then good. the rewards build on top of itemization 2.0 that came in season four sounds good so now how do you go about confronting the internal hordes how do you get back to hell uh, I think we can queue up some footage and then I'll, I'll talk you through some of the ways you get back to hell. All right. First off, you're going to. This is where everything goes awry. This is where it goes wrong. Okay. Infernal Hordes Compass. I mean, come on. Come on, people. There, there's too many materials. I, I sound like a broken record, but let, let's be let's be real here. I mean, what is, what is this? And then you have tiers of the of the compasses. Come on, man. Get rid of this. Get rid of the compasses. Hey, look, you go, you go where the hell entrance entrance is, you go into hell and boom, you walk through a dungeon and you walk into, you know, the infernal horde mode. You go and it's a, it needs to be a bigger map. This map looks really small. It needs to be a bigger, bigger map. And the buffs need to be just, it needs to be just random pop-ups. It shouldn't be where you have to make a choice and stop the combat. It should be like death must die or vampire survivor. You go down to hell. You're going into like this big ass arena, this big old hell map, and and enemies just keep coming. And the more enemies you kill, the higher level it goes. And there's no there's no interruptions, there's no in betweens. Bosses are mixed into it. There's no stopping and thinking. You just get the buffs as you go. They just automatically pop up. What do you all think about that? The bot the 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 buffs just automatically pop up, and you then you pick. You don't have to go to these little. You know, it's going to show you in a second. You don't have to go to these little hands coming out of the ground and then decide from three different, you know, uh, avenues. Hey, do I want this buff and bane? Do I want this buff and bane over here? Let me walk around and break up the entire flow of the horde mode. The whole point of the horde mode, right, is to have this this rush of enemies and like you could test your build over and over and figure out, hey, this is my favorite play style. This is a really good in-game, you know, solution. So let's get, let's, let's keep going though, because, gonna unlock, yeah. you know, the activity for hell yeah. uh, with a no. brisk eternal quest line, starting at world tier three in Zarbenzet. That's where you need to go in the PTR. Now you need a new type of key called a compass, which you can see down in the inventory below here. And like nightmare, isn't the point of why we got rid of, you know, aspects to free up inventory space? We didn't want to free up inventory space just to put more stuff back into it. Dungeons, the compasses all have a starting monster difficulty and a number of revives. And there are eight levels of difficulty with escalating challenge and rewards. As you can see, it's a very nightmare dungeon like flow here. No problem with that compasses part. can be upgraded to higher tiers with all new consumables called Abyssal Scrolls problem more consumables more currencies stop stop it man so you'll get stop. a chance to play with all these new features get, ri get rid of the currencies but let's let's really talk about the the gameplay itself and i think we've got some footage of the wave based play that I, we can show off here let's take a look at um this. first off gonna have a lot <laughs> of monsters now <laughs> you have one monster here this is the start of wave one and so that's you good yeah this aether fiend and it's going to drop something called Burning Aether, which is a new currency. Now, this new currency... <laughs> How many pieces of currency can you possibly put in a game? Currency is specific to hell, and you use it to unlock the spoils of hell at the end of a run. And at the end of each wave, uh, there's going to be what's called the Infernal Offer. So let's get through this wave, and we'll take a look at the Infernal why? Why? I, 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 stay with me here, okay? Get rid of this. I'll offer. Why? Stay with me here. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Drop some kind of item drops on the ground, like Death Must Die or Vampire Survivor. The, the thing just drops. You walk into it, 
it just automatically pops up and you have a split second to decide. You just go ahead and you just decide what buff you're going to get. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Let the let the potion or whatever drop on the ground. You walk over it. You don't even have to click on it. You just walk over it and boom, it, it pops up, a, you know, a, a dialogue. It just pops up. It says, boom, what buff do you want? You pick it real quick. You move on. Now you see these hands reaching out from hell itself, and they're tempting you with a choice. You're going to choose the form of your destructor. You're going to pick a boon and a bane that impacts the rest of your run. And so now you've chosen a, a boon and a bane, and yeah, that's going to modify the gameplay that comes up next. And so here you're jumping into one of the new activities that also unlocks Aether in this and this is a soul spire. It's pretty similar to a hell spire that you'd see in Helltide. Uh, and you have to kill a number of enemies within that ring in order to be able to earn an Aether. And no, none of this. This is all really good gameplay. I like this. Uh, the only criticism I have about this part, the horde mode specifically, just make the map bigger. Make it really big. I don't want to see the edges. I want this map to be so big that you can't see the edges of it, right? We don't, I don't want to be able to see the, the end of the map unless I really go far to get to the end of the map. Make it really big. Just make it really big. And you can upgrade Soul Spires from the Infernal Offer as well, if you like. And then finally, what you need to do is complete the... You hear that? It's just over and over, over and over, steps, 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 steps. Materials, materials, materials. Upgrade the Spires. Upgrade the Embers. Get the Embers. Upgrade the Compasses. No, no, man. Eliminate all of this. Get rid of all of this stuff. Get get rid of it. The get rid of, of this stuff. In order to be able to confront the boss. Get rid of it. And so you see in this particular run, uh, you're at five of five waves. So you are just about ready once you defeat this wave to go confront uh, the new bosses. For no problem with this part. That's cool to have waves. The, wa the, the waves ports. part, that's that's good. No, no problem with, with the... Uh, the base, the bottom line fundamental mechanics of it. The problem I have is with the extracurricular activities slapped on top of it. So we'll finish collecting our Aether here, uh, find our last number of enemies, and I think we're good. I think we're ready to go. So let's take a, a look at our new bosses. I think we've got some cool. Uh, this part's actually going to be cool, but I want to say, I want to give a little analogy here, okay? These the infernal horde mode as if you had a really good cheeseburger, but your lettuce was piled up so high you you couldn't even enjoy the burger because you had you had too much lettuce on it. That that's what these materials remind me of. You have really good food and it's ruined because it's drowned in ketchup. It has too much lettuce. It has something on it, right? It ruins the food. You know what I'm talking about. Or if it's something, if you have really good food, right? And then you have something on top of it that ruins the food. That's what this reminds me of. They have a good base idea. I, I like the whole concept of it. Everything's good. But then they add all of this junk on top of it. It ruins the whole, whole experience. And they put a lot of work into this thought. They put a lot of work into this. Just, just kiss. Keep it simple. Stupid. They're not stupid. That's not, you know, I'm not saying that. But kiss. Keep it simple. Kiss art to share here so the this is really good because they they brought the high council, council back they're going to be some familiar faces for diablo 2 players they are resurrected versions of the council members from diablo 2. now for those of you who didn't play diablo 2 uh the council members were now they, this is actually good they did a really good job with the design and the artwork because you know, obviously they didn't have the technology in Diablo 2, but I like how in this, the High Council, they separate the aspects of the bosses with, you know, on their arms. So you you could see one, you know, has fire, one has lightning, one's going to have ice. You could see that in the design of them. They are really well designed. They brought these bosses back, and I'm really happy to see it. I'm glad that I'm glad to see it. And I would expect them to be in, you know, the Vessel of Hatred expansion because they are going to the the cursed part of, you know, Sanctuary. Or former high priest of the Zakaru. Yeah. 
and they had uh, yeah see the, these designs look perfect uh from someone who's played diablo 2 for 20 years it's great uh, to see these in 3d promise to basically take care of mephisto after he'd been trapped in the soul stone yeah and he'd been hidden down and caressed and trevinkel and uh of course as it happens <laughs> mephisto corrupted them both in mind for and see, this is kind of like what I was talking about, about the other, the other bosses. You don't actually have to summon these bosses, right? You don't. You play through the horde mode, aka dungeon type of thing, and then the boss comes up at the end. That's what I'm talking about. So that part will be fun. This will be fun. I know this preliminary testing and we have the PTR. Hopefully we can convince them, or if anyone watches this, I doubt it, but hopefully we can convince them to get rid of these materials first and then their bodies and they became demons get rid of the materials just let everything drop from the from from the bosses who are just zealous and serve him without question and so uh oh and make the xp really good so that killing actual monsters works you know what else would be good if they they let you get uh glyph xp from this that's what they need to do we thought it was going to be really cool to be able to resurrect them and bring them back uh, for Diablo 4, and they fit great in hell. Uh, we had to tweak their power sets a little bit uh, to fit the D4 combat system. Yeah. So yeah. we gave them new titles and new looks to really reflect their, their combat specialties. Yeah. I'm not so sure I like the new titles. If you're bringing back the High Council from Diablo 2, I think you should you should have kept similar names to Diablo 2 just for nostalgic reasons. Other than that, yeah, it's, I, uh, I like it. It's, it's incredibly yeah. awesome to see. Uh, these guys come back, Agreed. you know, it's Agreed. giving very nostalgic uh, vibes of of yep. doing a bunch of, you know, Durance of Hate runs for, for Miss Visto and yeah. doing meth runs and everything like that. Yep. So, yeah, yep. it's really awesome to see them back in uh, Season 5. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Diablo 2 is certainly near and dear to our hearts here out in New York. And, uh, yeah, we're Looks really good. glad to have them back. Looks good. And we hope to see, uh, hopefully, more returning new faces in the future, too. Yeah, that's a hint. We're going to see some more Diablo 2 stuff and Vessel of Hatred, no doubt. So this uh, this is where I'm going to end the video. I'm not going to go into details about the itemization or the uniques and how they should or shouldn't be. I just wanted to talk about the Inferno Infernal Horde mode just from, you know, a Diablo veteran's perspective. I'll let the content creators dive into, you know, the uh, the uniques and and how those works and, and the itemization. They're much, the content creators for Diablo are much better at it. Like, you know, Riker, Darth, Mi Darth Microtransactions, you know, uh, all, all those guys, you know what I'm talking about. All those guys are way better at breaking down this itemization. You know, Mr. Llama, if he actually played this, would be good at breaking down these itemizations. So I'll just leave that up to them. I just wanted to give my opinion and feedback on the infernal, internal, infernal, hell mode, horde mode. Uh, you know, and hey, look, get rid of these materials, man. There are too many materials. Just get rid of them. It's easy. Click, delete, get rid of the materials. That That is my feedback for the infernal horde mode for Diablo 4 from the campfire chat. A little late, but still valid. Thanks for subscribing and liking. I'll see you next time.